It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I want to talk about some speed tests that you can use graphically by running them yourselves with Docker. These are both open source, of course, and they are completely self-hostable, so that's the best part about it. I love to run speed tests and I love one of the things about Eero is that it runs my speed tests for me in the background all the time so I can kind of check and make sure I'm getting what I expect from my ISP. Now, as I switch off of that, I want something where I can still run my speed tests. So something I can do is spin up one of these applications in a, in a really inexpensive DigitalOcean uh, droplet, and I can just have that thing go and run against it all the time, and DigitalOcean has plenty of bandwidth to show me what I'm getting as far as my speed tests out to the Internet. So if you're a customer of Verizon, or you're a customer of AT&T, or you're a customer of Cox, or you're a customer of whoever, and they say, oh, we need you to run a speed test, you know, go hit our speed test server. Let me tell you now, that's going to run great. That's their speed test server. And even if it doesn't run great, nothing says that they don't have something in the background that just says, just present them with something that says they're getting about what they should be getting. So I like to run against speed tests that aren't owned by those companies. Um, Speedtest.net is out there. Feel free to use it when you want to. Um, speedof.me, speedof.me. Also another one that you can just run against if you want to, but owning my own and knowing where it is and knowing that I'm hitting that and probably getting more accurate results makes me feel better. Additionally, inside my network, running speed tests can really, really be useful. Now, I've shown you guys some ways to do speed tests in the past with some CLI tools, but there's nothing quite like a nice little GUI, and a web GUI makes it really easy. So we're going to run a couple of these today. One is called Open Speed Test, and it looks really cool. There's a live demo, so you can go out there and click on this and just have it run if you want to to see what's going on you know, against their demo site. But again, the point is to run it ourselves, right? Self-host it ourselves. So we're going to talk about how to do that. And we've also got LibreSpeed, which is another one that's open source, and we could get out there and kind of run. Now, this image is provided by Linux server. I've just modified their Docker Compose file a bit to make it simpler, and we'll get it up and running as well. So we're going to make a few changes. We'll talk about what those are and how to get it installed right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon and my subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for all of your support. I love doing this channel. I love making this media and this content for you. I hope you enjoy it as well. I do post all of the videos now over at Patreon after one of my patrons made the suggestion, and I don't know why it didn't dawn on me before that. But if you're interested in seeing them through Patreon and getting notifications through Patreon instead of through YouTube or hoping that YouTube's algorithms happens to show it to you, jump over and become a supporter on Patreon, patreon.com. I've got the links in the description and the show notes. I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. All right, so I'm logged into the server that I want to put these things on. And right off the bat, I have my Docker folder. As we look in here, you'll see a couple of folders that I've created. One is Libre Speed Test, and the other one is Open Speed Test. So you can see both of those right here inside of my folder uh, setup. So you'll want to do the same thing. If you don't have a Docker folder, I highly recommend you create a, a root Docker folder. And, and I don't mean root like as in the root user, but a Docker folder that you're going to put the rest of your Docker stuff inside of to keep it organized on your server. And then create folders for each thing that you want to run, just like I have here. So I'm going to go into uh, Open Speed Test first, and we'll do an ls there. And you can see I've got this docker run.txt file now. I'm going to go into Portainer and show you that I don't have this running yet. So I'm going to go back over here to Portainer. And you can kind of look here. I don't have Open Speed Test running. I don't have Libre Speed Test running. It's just not there yet, but we're going to have it running here in just a minute. And I'm going to go back over to the command line here. And what I did was I created this docker run.txt. So if I just cat that out, you can see here I've got the command that I want to run. Now, I'm going to change a couple of things in this before we start it. But this is exactly what we want to do. It's very simple, very straightforward. So I'm going to do nano docker run.txt, and we're going to change these ports. I don't want to run on these ports here. 3000 and 3001 are common ports for a lot of web applications, so I don't like to use those on the host side. So anytime you're going to change something, you can change the left side of the colon. So I'm going to put this as 8191. I'm going to put this one as 8192. And that's going to run as part of our speed test stuff here. And we've got basically a simple docker run command, which is docker run dash dash restart unless stopped. Name is going to be speed test, and then we're going to run this as dash D, which is run it as a daemon. Uh, port is 8191 to 3000 on the container side. Don't ever change the right side. This is the container. But the left side you can change because this is your host port that you're going to hit the service with. And then open speed test latest is what we've got running there. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this with control O and enter and exit. 
I'm going to clear this real quick so it's easier for you guys to see. And I'm going to do cat docker run.txt again. And there's my command. So I'm just going to highlight this thing. And I'm going to copy it right here to the command prompt. And then I'm going to hit enter and let it pull down open speed test and get it up and running. And there it is. It says that it's pulled everything down so we can go back into Portainer. Now if you don't have Portainer, you can run Docker logs right from the command line, but I'm just going to go in Portainer here. I'm going to refresh my container list and we should see open speed tests along in here somewhere. Oh, right here. So I'm going to go into the logs. Let's make sure it looks like everything started okay. Yeah, it looks like everything's running. So we'll go back over here. We're going to go back down to open speed test and I'm just going to click on the on the 8191. Oops, I don't think I typed in 8191 there. That's okay. We're going to click on this. So you see the UI comes up pretty quickly. It's a really nice looking user interface here. And you can see there's nothing listed yet for our download, upload, anything like that. But we've got a start button. So I'm going to click on start. And you'll see right away it kicks off. Now I'm connected to my network through a wired network connection. And you can see it's doing the download test now. And you get the graphics up here. And here's our download speed. Now it's going to do the upload test. And then there's our upload speed. So really, really fast. It gives us a ping time of 8 milliseconds, which is pretty great. So that's really awesome. And here we can kind of see everything ran. We're done. And it's good to go. We want to rerun it. We can just hit refresh. And we're back to where we can rerun the speed test. So that's open speed test. Not really hard, not difficult to set up. A very, very simple user interface. Very easy to get going. So I really like that. Very nice. Now we're going to jump over to Libre Speed Test and we'll install it as well. So I'm just going to CD back into the Docker folder here and we'll clear this out. And if we do LS, again, you can see that I've got Libre Speed Test listed right here. So I'm going to CD into that. And if I do LS, you see I've got a Docker Compose file. So I'm going to just uh, nano that Docker Compose file. So here we've got Libre Speed Test as a Docker Compose file. I've, I've changed the time zone to be my time zone and the PUID and PGID are set to my user and group IDs. If you're not sure if your user and group IDs are a thousand, you can do this in the command line. So I'm just going to save this and we'll exit real quick. Um, you can just do ID and you'll get a list of all of your information. So user ID is for a thousand for Brian and group ID is a thousand for Brian. That's what we're looking for. Yours might be different numbers and if they are, take note of them and then change them inside of the Docker Compose file. But we will just go right back into that. And America Chicago is my time zone. You should set your time zone accordingly here. And then this is like an environment variable that they've set. So I'm not sure what this is going to do. We're going to find out when we run this. And then I've set this to be home, Brian, Docker, and then Libre Speed Test and config. So I'm setting up this config folder here uh, to be mapped to their config folder. And then this port, I'm actually going to change this. It was 80. I'm going to make this 8190. And that's a little closer to the Open Speed Test port. And unless stopped is when it's going to restart. So it'll restart all the time unless I stop it. I'm going to save that with Control O and Enter and Control X to exit. And now I'm going to do Docker Compose Up dash D. So it went out and it got it. Now it found a newer image. So I already had Libre Speed pulled down. The image pulled down because I was testing that one earlier. But uh, it did get a newer image. So uh, everything should be up and running now. So I'm going to go back into Portainer here just because we can see things a little bit more easily in Portainer. I'm going to refresh the list of servers again. And right here we see LibreSpeed, and we've got my port here set up, so I'm going to click on this. Looks like everything is good. I'm going to enlarge this just a little bit for now, so you can kind of see the interface a little better. But here you've got the start button. You're going to get ping time. You're going to get jitter, download, and upload. And then below that, it gives you a summary when it's finished. So I'm going to zoom it back out to 100%. We're going to click start, and we're going to let this thing go. 8 millisecond ping time, 3.64 millisecond jitter. I'm not sure what jitter means, but it sounds like it's had too much coffee to me. So our download's done, 723 megabits per second. It's working on the upload. Upload's going a little bit faster, which is interesting. And there we go. So we get the summary down here the same way we do with Open Speed Test. So you can kind of see exactly what we got with Open Speed Test and what we get with this. So let's just run the Open Speed Test again. So there we go. You can see the comparison. This says 5 millisecond ping time, 864 upload, 806 download. 
Here we've got an 8 millisecond ping time, we've got a 723 download and an 851 upload. So very close, and of course you're going to get different results every time you run one of these things, but I think this is a really great way on my network to see what's going on. Now I could also set this up on DigitalOcean, something like that, run these things on DigitalOcean, and then just get out there and hit DigitalOcean and back, and I'm going to get what my internet speeds are whenever I do that. So I've got it set up on DigitalOcean and I'm going to go hit that right now. Let me just uh, bring that up for you guys in a separate tab. I've set up a Libra speed. I didn't set up open speed test yet, uh, but we'll do speed dot speed dot open source is awesome dot com. I believe is the right one. Yeah, there it is. So this is going out to DigitalOcean. Now you'll notice that this is uh, not secured and it's on purpose. I found that when I set up uh, my web proxy, I get slower speeds when I do the SSL encrypted version. Uh, and if I'm, and I'm using Nginx proxy manager, so going through that proxy with SSL definitely has an effect on the download speeds. And you would, you should expect that because it's encrypting and decrypting in between. But in this case, I'm just trying to find out the raw speeds. So we're going to run this 68 millisecond ping time and we're going to run this. And this is my, my internet speed. So yeah, I'm supposed to get 400, 400 megabits per second. So if I'm getting 500 megabits per second download from my ISP, then I'm doing really well. Uh, I'm supposed to get 20 megabits per second. So if I'm getting 20 or 24, 25, that's good. But again, that could be depending on how they're doing the math of what they consider megabits per second. Um, so if they're doing 1024 as bits, then it's one thing. If they're doing a thousand, it's another thing. So you could look in the code and see what they're doing and make modifications if you're not happy with the way they're calculating that. But you can see here, I'm getting exactly what I expect. I'm going to show you the difference here. Um, I'll leave this up. In fact, I'll open it in another tab. I'm going to go to HTTPS. And you'll see it still loads, but now it's locked. It's got the S. And you're going to see it's a different, very, very different because the, the ping time is longer. But you see here, 240, 250, it's nowhere near that 400, 500 because we've got the encryption and decryption happening. The upload may not be affected as much. Yeah, it is. Look at that. It's not 24, 25. It's around 8 or 10. So definitely a difference whenever you have this going through the HTTPS. So be aware of that when you're setting this up, if you're going out to check your speeds on the internet. Um, the HTTPS really seems to have an effect when we're talking about the speeds that you get. So if you go to HTTP, you'll see more accurate speeds for what you should be getting. If you go to HTTPS, I mean, I'm seeing about half, maybe a little bit more. Now, this one finally jumped up at the end close to what I'm supposed to be getting, but this one never got anywhere near what I should be getting as far as uh, download speeds. So just be aware of that whenever you're checking out these sites. I'm going to leave this site up for about a month after I post the video on it so you guys can go out there and hit it. I would highly recommend doing the HTTP version and not the HTTPS unless you just want to see the difference in the speeds that you get. But feel free to hit it, try, try it out. Um, after about a month, I'll take it down. I'm just going to use this internally myself, but if you guys want to set these up, feel free, get out there and do that. I think it's a really great application. Both of these are terrific applications, so Open Speed Test and Libre Speed Test are really cool. I really like the graphical side of this one, honestly, a little bit better, and it's a little bit simpler file, but Libre Speed Test works just as well, and they've both got great summaries and statistics, so I think that's awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.